This is Henry Grossman. Uh, this tutorial, uh, series of tutorials, is going to show you how to do uh, brick coursing based on a, an arbitrary surface in Rhino. It's going to be a, a series of a couple. Uh, in the first one, what we're going to do is take uh, a curve and do one course of brick along one curve, and then we'll build from there in the next one. So the first thing I need uh, is I need a curve. Um, let's go ahead and just draw one in uh, Rhino. Let's get a little more curve than that. Um, let me just see how what the distance is. Um, a little smaller. Um, then the next thing, uh, so we need a uh, parameter to hold that curve. We'll call it bottom course curve. Set one curve. Um, and we need a couple parameters for our uh, masonry units. So we need a, uh, let's say, a brick link, a brick height. A brick depth. I'm putting these in number parameters, uh, not integers, um, and a uh, mortar joint. And I'm going to set the brick length to be uh, 7 and 5 eighths. The height I'm going to set to be 2 and a quarter. The depth I'm going to set to be uh, 3 and 5 eighths. And the, uh, the mortar joint I'm going to set to be 3 eighths. So the first thing I want to do is I want to divide up that curve uh, according to the length of a brick plus a mortar joint. I'll get an addition component at a, a brick length plus a mortar joint, I'll dump that to a parameter, which I'll call BM blank. Um, and then I'm going to go to curve, divide distance, and divide up uh, my curve into a series of points. Right. So those are going to be my center points. Uh, my center points for my uh, my bricks. Um, so uh, the next thing I want to do is actually I want to I want to make the brick, um, and I'm going to do that with uh, a center box, which you can find under surface center box, and you need to give it a uh, a length, a width, and a depth. Um, and that's going to be, it's kind of like a radius, it's like from the center point out, so we actually need to take these dimensions and divide them in half, which is a little annoying, um, but let's do it. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm going to do that with a function. And I'm going to change, this is one of the few times I ever change the name of a function, um, is sometimes I'll change the name of a, uh, or a function component. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, let me see and set the expression to be x divided by 2. So this will be my brick length divided by 2. I'll make that x. My uh, depth divided by 2, I'll make y. And my uh, height divided by 2, I'll make z. Um, and the next thing we need is we need a, a plane so we can make an xy plane from each one of those points. Uh, so under vector, plane, xy plane. Um, actually, let's take the well, let's take the center point and put it to a parameter. We'll call it uh, bottom course CP. Because we're going to do a lot of modifying of this definition later, so it's good that we're always putting the output of our components into a parameter. 
So if I do this, I dump it to the box, turn off all this, you can see that what I'm getting is uh, I'm getting the bricks, but they're all sort of running the same direction. They're not following the curve. So what I need in order to follow the curve is I need to create a, uh, a plane that also follows the curve. Um, and there's nothing that comes out of divide distance. Uh, oh, there is, actually. What there is that comes out of divide distance is a tangent vector. So that tangent vector is essentially what we want that tangent vector to be is to be the x um, the x uh, axis of our new plane. So what we want to do is we want to make a plane uh, from uh, x and y, where which um, so under vector plane it's uh, uh, plane creates plane from x and y axes, right? So the tangent vector is our new x, and the new y um, is basically going to be the vector that is uh, that is perpendicular to the tangent vector. And the, the easiest way to do that uh, is to take the vector cross product of that tangent vector uh, and a vector pointing straight up in z. And if we do that, we, we get the vector that points in the opposite direction. If we plug that in here. And then the next thing we want is we want our divide distance point. That's going to be the center point of our new plane. So when I do that, if I turn off the boxes here, you see that my planes now follow the curve. It's a little bit hard to see. But you'll see that once I take my plane now, and plug it right into the box uh, and once I turn the preview back on let's turn the preview off on the plane that what I get now is I get a uh, a series of bricks that um, that follow that curve um, so what we're going to do if we, if we look at this in um, the front elevation. Um, what we want to do now, actually, let me just prove if I turn the points on on my original curve and I move them, everything updates. And what's nice is because it's dividing up this line according to the actual distance, which is the, uh, the length of a brick, um, if the line gets longer, it just adds more bricks. Or if I were to do something like uh, make a you know, very long brick, the line would get divided up differently. So in the next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to take a surface and we're going to get a series of lines out of the surface so that we can get uh, not one course of brick, but a whole, uh, but a whole, a whole wall of brick. And the tricky thing will be uh, how to make the common bond work in the right way.